Yo, welcome back to the house where we talk news, celebrities, and hot topics. We have a lot to go over, so let's go ahead and get into it. Aoki Lee Simmons is no longer with this old white rich man. Listen, uh, she was out there in St. Bart's with Mr. Vitario Ossoff, a 65-year-old restaurateur. He founded the restaurant Serafina. They were out there in St. Bart's, uh, you know, rubbing on each other's backs and kissing each other's faces and things like that. Aoki's father, Russell Simmons, came out to TMZ and said that he's not going to kick and scream about his daughter's choices and that all he can do is offer his advice and unconditional love, which I found to be really interesting, seeming as though he don't want that lady, that woman, that young woman to be calling him about Nathan. OK, that was a whole situation a few years back. Kamora Lee Simmons, according to Page Six, was up in arms about the situation. She allegedly was furious about her daughter's new romance with Mr. Vitario, the 65-year-old, right? And Aoki Lee Simmons is 21, by the way, a 43-year age gap. Okay, pretty, pretty crazy times. Um, but also, according to Page Six, they're saying that Kamora Lee Simmons really doesn't have to worry about the situation any longer because a source told them that Aoki, 21, and Mr. Ossoff, 65, are no longer a thing, that they're 100% done. And they're absolutely not dating any longer. Well, that was easy. Okay, the easy staples button. That was easy. Okay, they were dating on Monday and then no longer an item on Tuesday. Aoki, why did you waste our time? Why did you waste our time? Why do I kind of have a feeling that he kind of broke it off? Because there was an Instagram live, right, where she was passing the shops. They were both in the car and she was uh, passing the shops. And she was like, oh, my God, Cartier. I love Cartier. Can you buy me a piece of jewelry? And oh my God, let's go to the Bahamas next. And let's go to Australia, Sydney. And let's go to South Africa. Let's go to Johannesburg. And I'm like, girl, girl, you acting your age now. You acting your age. And that's one thing about these older folks, because I only really date older men. And they don't like it when you are... They, they they don't like it when you try to change their lives too much and they don't like it when you are just trying to do too much i'll just go ahead and say that i'm gonna just go ahead and say that listen um or maybe he or she excuse me miss aoki maybe aoki used him for a free trip to the caribbean maybe who knows y'all let me know how y'all feel about everything in the comments down below moving right along we have the eclipse did y'all check out the eclipse did y'all care about the eclipse i don't understand why everybody was so again this is going to be my new phrase up in arms because y'all say i say arms wrong i'm saying it like o-r-m-s and it's supposed to be arms like a a-a-r-m-s arms does anybody get mixed up r and our like a-r-e and o-u-r our like this is our house versus are you going to the party r and our Anyways, and then you have hour as in this is our house. And then the hour, like, what's the time? 12 o'clock. What hour is it? Okay, anyways. um, What was I talking about? Okay, the eclipse. Everybody was up in arms, child, about the eclipse. Oh, my God, are you going to watch the eclipse? Oh, my God, did you get glasses? Oh, my God, eclipse party. Let's go to the store and get liquor and let's go to the park and do a whole picnic and a party. And let's put some hot dogs and some barbecue ribs on the grill. It's a solar eclipse, 100% totality. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm thinking, who gives a fuck? Like, what do you mean this is a once in a lifetime experience? Why do I feel like there's an eclipse every fucking year, every other year? Like, what do you mean? And apparently, you know, there's different types of eclipses. Okay, I was educated. There are different types of eclipses. But this one was super special because it had something to do with the fact that it was like a totality something or another. OK, it was a total solar eclipse. If I'm not mistaken, if you're a scientist, let me know in the comments down below what the hell was going on. What's the phenomena? Um, but listen, I didn't really give a damn. But you know who did? A lot of the religious folks, the spiritual folks, the uh, Christians onto social media, they were basically saying that it was going to be a massacre, child. And I was too confused at the situation. Check this out. You know, I never get on this app and cry. We don't have time no more. We don't have time. If you live in the city of Dallas, Texas, 
if you live in the city of Dallas, Texas, there is a massacre that is about to happen on the city of Dallas. Y'all, we don't have time to be playing. We don't have time to be worried about it. Any other shut down here. Okay, I'm gonna just stop it right there because sis is unhinged. Listen, what I also forgot to mention is the fact that it doesn't really make a difference. If you were in like Little Rock, I believe Arkansas or like Dallas, Texas, if you were in the path of totality, then you would have seen the full effect of the solar eclipse. If you were in Atlanta, Georgia, like me and some other folks, then all that happened was a bit of dimming of the goddamn sun. Like, who cares? OK, you saw the moon while it was bright outside, but it just didn't really make a difference to me. Anyways, but this lady, I believe she's in Dallas, Texas, if I'm not mistaken. Um, she put on TikTok, oh my God, it's about to happen. It's going to happen. And we don't have time. We don't have time to be playing. We don't have time. And it's like, sis, we don't have time for you and your shenanigans. What the fuck is wrong with y'all? All on social media, this is a sign of the times. And Jesus is coming back. And that's the option. How can a man say it's about to be a massacre? And then I kind of feel like she should be investigated by the FBI, Homeland Security, like Diddy or somebody, because why are you on the Internet talking about it's going to be a massacre in Dallas? To me, that is not protected under free speech because you're inciting like hysteria, mass hysteria. Is that a law inciting mass hysteria? What does a massacre? Doesn't massacre mean you're killing people? An indiscriminate and brutal slaughter of the people. Slaughter butcher murder kill annihilate exterminate who was exterminated who was annihilated i really want to know if you're religious or if you're spiritual or whatever and if you feel like these are signs from god then fine that's how you feel but to go on to tiktok talking about there's a massacre that's going to be in dallas and we don't have time i just kind of feel like it's too much like sis we can't even take you serious what kind of headphones are those I'm a little bit confused at the situation. So I was watching The View, scrolling and trolling, minding my business. And Sunny was kind of repeating these sentiments. She had like a wardrobe stylist or somebody basically say that Jesus is coming back. And that's why New York got the earthquake. And now we have a solar eclipse and this, that and the third. And I'm like, girl. My question is, how is it a sign when we know when solar eclipses are going to happen? The scientists let us know that the next total solar eclipse will be in August. I think August 12th of uh, 2043. So what do you mean? It's a sign. It's a sign. Well, if it's a sign, we knew about the sign years ago. I mean, is it just me? I'm a little bit confused. And then Sonny gonna say, well, it must be climate change or something like that. And I'm like, girl, girl, girl. But y'all check this clip out. It's really interesting because Whoopi and Sonny kind of get into it. Watch. Minster in New Jersey. Right. Yes. Fun fact. I, so it originated with Trump. I, have to, I, I, I know, right? I mean, I have to say, um, Karen Dupiche, our, our wonderful, oh one my of our wonderful makeup artists, when the earthquake was happening, she put her coat on and she was like, Jesus is coming. I'm and out. So I'm, I'm out. I'm leaving. We've got a solar eclipse. Uh, we've she got the earthquake. The she ran down the hallway. The and rapture then, is here. The rapture's here. <laughs> and then also I learned that the cicadas are coming. Cicadas. Cicadas. Although I love For the, the first time <laughs> in cicada, like. Cicada. No, no, no. No, 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 two different, no, two, no, well, they, this is what I there's read, two, two different there's times. There's two different are, kinds of cicadas Yes, two different times, times are coming. The good cicadas but, and the bad cicadas. But no. for the first time <laughs> in, in many, many years. No, and seven, so, every 17 years this happens. Well, that's not what I read, but maybe, <laughs> but, you know, maybe well, you know better. I, but in I a way. say all those, all those things whoa, together. Whoa, Sonny said, that's not what I read, but maybe you know better. And Whoopi said, well, in a way, I do know better. Child, what the hell is going on? Sonny is being testy. Okay, we talked about what her, uh, you know, response to Coleman Hughes and his We Don't Need to Focus on Race book, um, that whole situation. And then we've been talking about how Whoopi Goldberg is super, super grumpy and how everybody wants her to be fired because they prefer Fridays when Joy Behar is moderator and Whoopi is at the house. Y'all, it's a whole hot damn mess. But y'all, then Sunny goes on and on talking about climate change, y'all. Would maybe lead one to believe that, you know, either climate change exists 
That's more or the something point. is really or going that's, on. returning. Earthquakes are not at the mercy of climate change. It's underground. No. It can't, I don't it, think it, that's it happens and the, and the, the eclipse, they've known about the eclipse coming because eclipses happen and they actually can say when these things are going to happen. So all these all right, so that's that situation. Let me know. Um, I just feel like the hysteria and the conspiracy theories, I mean, if it's not global warming, it's, uh, you know, it's Joe Biden. If it's not Joe Biden, it's the Democrats. If it's not them, it's Oprah Winfrey. If it's not Oprah, it's Jeffrey Epstein and Harvey Weinstein, chow. A whole hot damn mess. All right, y'all let me know how y'all feel about everything in the comments down below. What's next? Uh... Okay, up next we have a uh, Summer House Martha's Vineyard. Are you guys watching Summer House Martha's Vineyard? Okay, I want to go ahead and talk about Noel and Alex. Even though I put this picture in here because I thought it was Noel, but it's not Noel. That is Summer. Remember, I told y'all that Summer and uh, Mr. Alex here had a fling last season, and during the off season they were having sex, being grown, and things like that. Well, Alex kind of wants to do his own thing. He's not too interested in miss summer here and so now they're broken up but summer brought this girl onto the show not her summer brought this girl onto the show her name is noelle and noelle kind of wants to shoot her shot at mr alex here now there's a few issues with this whole scenario one i don't understand why noelle who is supposedly summer's friend or wants to shoot her shot at someone that summer had sex with i find that to be a bit weird but i also don't really understand the death of their relationship maybe it's not really a real friendship like that and maybe they're just connected for the show i'm not too sure the other thing about this scenario that i find to be weird is the fact that alex okay the reason why everybody's coming on to alex is not just because he's fine because he is fine okay the nigga is sexy but it's because he's the only single man onto the show there is a shortage of dick and what did i say a few days ago about this show that the women on this show need to stop bigging up Alex's already big head as the only single man in the show, on the show, right? He's now walking around the house like he owns it because he curved and swerved on Shanice for being a stalker, okay? He curved and swerved on Summer after he hit, and now he's curving and swerving on Noel because Noel went up to Alex in a bar. They're at a random bar, and Alex is flirting with this girl. Noel is, you know, watching and she kind of feels a ways because she kind of has the hots for Mr. Alex here. Mind y'all, earlier in the episode, some random dude came to the house and Noel was flirting with him. So at this particular point in time, we see that Noel is doing her thing and Alex is doing his thing, even though Noel knows that she likes Alex. So in present day, she pulls Alex to the side and basically goes, I feel a ways that you're flirting with this random girl. And then she kind of pulls herself back. And I don't know if she said that verbatim, but I'm paraphrasing. Um, and then she kind of backtracks and goes, wait, do you even know that I like you, that I'm interested? And Alex is like, well, um, I mean, I don't know. And you're, 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 you're a cool girl. But Phaedra. And then Noelle goes, yeah, I mean, I'm single. I'm doing what I'm doing. I was flirting with a random dude the other day and you're single and you're doing what you're doing. And so I really shouldn't feel a ways. But then I do feel a ways and I'm interested. How do you feel? And in my head, I'm thinking, girl, don't do it. Don't do it. And I'm also thinking if you guys are both single and you guys have agency to do whatever the fuck you want to do, why is this even a conversation? What producer hyped you up to do this? Is so Alex basically goes, you're cute, you're fun, and you're cool, but not interested. It was a super embarrassing situation. So listen, they're going to continue to big Alex's already big head up. I mean, it's just a hot damn mess. Listen, and then we have uh, Miss Jordan here. What's interesting about Jordan is that Jordan and Summer got into it a little bit. Summer was trying to apologize and smooth things over with Shanice because remember in the previous episode, uh summer basically said that Shanice has the worst style that she's the worst dresser and we found out that the reason why Shanice is the worst dresser is because she ain't got no money for clothes she was moved out there to Tampa for a job and then they let her off before she could start and so now she ain't got no money for clothes even though TikTok will have you believing that Shanice got the most expensive clothes onto the show she was probably wearing dupes to the lady on TikTok but listen okay so 
they were at dinner and they were having this conversation. It was between Summer and um, Shanice. And Summer was like, girl, you know, you look good. You have the best body at the table. And then the guys at the table start laughing. And then Summer goes, what's funny? Why are you guys laughing? So then Jordan goes, who's laughing? And Summer says, the boys are. Then Jordan goes, why are you yelling? And my whole thing is, number one, Jordan, grow up. You are not as self-aware as how you portray. Uh, first things first, why do you expect Jasmine to have the same personality from when she was single now that she's a married woman trying to have a family? Girl, get over yourself. For you to try to like low key keep your distance and oust her from the group, I just kind of feel like is lame. Okay. I also feel like it's lame for you to question Summer on who's laughing when clearly the boys were laughing. Okay, play back the tape, shady producers. Number three, how you gonna say, why are you yelling at me? Sis, all Summer did was match your energy. And I feel like everybody's getting on Summer for being weird and for being a mean girl. But I just kind of felt like Jordan ain't the nicest girl in the bunch. And maybe she's feeling a ways because of the whole alopecia situation. But I just kind of feel like I'm gonna need them to hold uh, Jordan accountable like they do Bria and Summer and everybody else. All right. So y'all let me know how y'all feel about that situation in the comments down below. But moving right along, speaking of Bravo shows, we have Real Housewives of Potomac. Oh no, let me go ahead and talk about Carlos King. All right, so I wasn't even gonna talk about this, but I was listening to uh, Two Teas in a Pod, Two Broke Girls podcast show with the Teddy Mellencamp and special guest Carlos King. And it reminded me of an Instagram live from Love and Marriage DC star Winter. Okay. And I don't talk about Love and Marriage DC because why would I? Number one. But number two, I did about two years ago when it first came on, I did give it a chance and I didn't like it. So I stopped watching it, right? Um, but this kind of was interesting because Winter, who was my favorite when I did watch it, um, was on Instagram basically saying that this is going to be her last season, that the show was dumb, and I'm paraphrasing, but she basically says that the show was dumb, that the show has no real friends on it, that they weren't friends during the show's inception, that the only reason why people were interested was because of Monique. Now that Monique is not on, nobody really cares. She says that the ratings are low, and the network will rather play reruns of Love and Marriage Huntsville because their reruns get bigger numbers than this show i mean she tore the show all the way down to the ground on this little tv show and called it a submersible a sinking submersible called the titanic or the titan that's being controlled by a playstation xbox controller a logitech controller and we're bound to blow up any day now child okay it is a whole situation but on the part about the fake friendships and the inauthentic relationships onto these shows I believe that the number one fatal flaw of Carlos King and his shows is the fact that he cast a bunch of non-friends, a bunch of people who do not have authentic relationships, passes them off as friends. But I think what's even worse than that is the fact that his cast don't even be wanting to be friends. They don't be interested in each other. So it's like, why are we filming this? I mean, Winter went onto Instagram and was basically like, why would I film a reunion with people I don't care about? Talking about situations that I could care less about with people that I don't even, you know, have any interest in being friends with. At that particular point, if don't nobody care about each other, why the fuck are we filming this show? Okay. Let me know how y'all feel about everything in the comments down below. So. They say that the show is a sinking ship and it's about to be canceled, child. Okay. All right. Last but not least, I did want to mention Miss Necka. Uh, that was a complete mistake. I didn't mean to call her Neck. Okay. I said I was going to stop doing that. Listen, uh, Necka from the Real Housewives of Potomac. Listen, in last Sunday night's episode, I saw this and I was a bit confused. I'm like, why is Necka upset? But then I'm like, oh, Necka is upset because she's not as involved as she wants to be. She feels left out. And to NECA's defense, I will say that, you know, 
she's new to the show and a lot of the things a lot of the themes and topics are deeply rooted and you know they're rooted in history right and she has not been there for the history of a lot of the show's issues and so she doesn't have a lot to contribute right so she's feeling left out. They're behind the scenes and Mia's basically letting it be known. It looks like you're watching the show. You need to speak up. AKA, if you don't start speaking, you're going to be fired. So shout out to Mia for, you know, giving her sis a heads up. And then Neka's husband kind of chimes in. And I was a bit flabbergasted at the situation because I've been seeing the comments on Twitter of the people saying that Neka treats her husband really poorly. But honestly, I've been confused about those comments because. I never noticed. I never noticed how Neka treats her husband, but that might be because I low key be fast forwarding through a lot of her scenes. Okay, now ask me why I do that. Well, listen, I know that fertility and infertility is a big theme when it comes to women. And I know it's, you know, something that they go through. And I respect it and I love it. You know, motherhood is a big deal and it's amazing. However, I feel like on the Housewives franchise, we get these fertility or infertility storylines so frequently, so often that I'm a bit jaded by the situation. Therefore, I kind of fast forward. Okay, do I really care to see you be artificially inseminated? No, I don't. Okay. Um, so I never noticed. That nigga be treating her husband like scum of the earth until this moment. Really good at not engaging on social media, not attacking anybody, not doing anything because I'm uh, under the impression that the reunion is my time to really say what I want to say. You gotta get it out now. Yes, I've been attacked. I've been dragged. You don't say that. I'm going to. It's gonna kind of like look like you're watching a show. I know. I'm gonna say that. I'm gonna say it. What you don't wanna do is allow anybody to stop you. So if anyone tries to interrupt you, you say, hey, can I speak? Again, what you don't want is me speaking for you. I will do that. Yeah. You are not helping me. But basically the husband is like, you know, if somebody interrupts you, reclaim your time. Don't let them interject. And it's pretty clear to me that there is something missing because he all of a sudden goes from standing over her to kind of sitting down. But by the end of that exchange, she says that you're not helping me. And if you don't support me, then you need to go where Juan Dixon is. And Juan Dixon isn't there. Can I speak? Again, what you don't want is me speaking for you. I will do that. Yeah. You are not helping me. Nigga, that's some nasty work. Okay, that's some nasty work, cha. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about everything in the comments down below. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to create a great day. Bye.